Two more jockeys have fallen off the NRL coaches' carousel. The uh, pen finally pulled on the Tigers. Michael Maguire and Nathan Brown gone from the Warriors. Not a huge surprise, I guess, for either of them. Let's go with the Tigers. Fletch, what are your thoughts? Yeah, well, the drums were beating about Michael Maguire. I, I thought the fact that they put, like, a KPI, they said, right, you've got to get to... Before the buy, you've got to be on 10 points. I mean, being a, being a first-grade coach... There's enough pressure, pressure as it is. So to, to have that in the back of your mind, whether the players knew that or not, obviously the public didn't know, but um, look, the, the Tigers, what's that now? Four coaches in the last seven years or so. So something has to change because we can't... I don't know what sort of coach that they're looking for. They went for the hard nose with Madge, obviously coming off a premiership winner at South Sydney. They tried to get that old school coach... That obviously hasn't worked. I'm just wondering who's out there to replace him. And that's the issue, Fletch. It's the same old names. And, Usman, I want to put a theory to you, and I'm fascinated by your response. When you talk to a lot of modern players, they say there is a disconnect in modern rugby league of coaches about my age or a bit younger with athletes of about your age of, uh, or a bit younger, that they go like that all the time, that they just don't get each other. And I'm not blaming anyone in particular, but I'm saying it's the modern world. The Warriors have had seven coaches in 10 years. Now, do you think that old-fashioned style coach, can you sense that disconnect? Do you think that theory is fair? Look, I don't know what's happened exactly um, at the Tigers with Madge and the playing group, but... From my point of view, from Queensland and being around some of the young guys, there's definitely a generation gap. The younger guys are slightly different. When I came up, shut your mouth, get on with it, you know, respect. I had, when I first came to New South Wales, we had people like Brad Haddon, Stuart Clark, you know, real, and it was a real old school mentality of just like, keep your head down, get going. But the kids coming through today, they're a bit different. I find them a bit more sensitive too. So even when I talk to them, I have to actually talk to them a little bit differently. I don't think that's a bad thing. You just have to understand that they're all different. They're all coming from different generations. Look, they are the Instagram, TikTok generation. They are different. So you have to try to relate to them on their level, which is really important. I think a coach can be successful from different eras. He just has to understand how to relate to the different players. But there be, there's the likes of Wayne Bennett. Yep, or yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's at, exceptions. At the Lions as well, who, who was terrific. But at the same time, it sounds like with with the Tigers in particular, is it is it the coach that's the issue, or are there, yeah. well, there the, issues with the hierarchy? The thing is, you, get, you can have that hard nosed coach, but you need those hard nosed senior players. Like that's the message you want to get across. You need at least four or five senior players to back the coach up. Yeah. At the moment, fr from the outside, we saw what happened in t Tales from Tiger Town last year. We saw the, the documentary. I was astounded after a game. They got beat by about 30. And Madge was furious. That, so he should be. And no one said a word. Like they, the coach left and they just sat around like this. Like, in my day, so, a senior player would have spoken up. It just it shocked me, the, the lack of... Yeah. I suppose it, it didn't really mean enough to them. Can I just say one thing on that? Like, we've talked about the coaches and you mentioned hierarchy. And I'm a player's player. I'm still a player. I love the players. <laughs> but at some stage, the players have to take ownership too, right? Yeah. If you're going 10 years and you're struggling, you can't just blame the staff and the coaches. I mean, the players have to have, you know, you have to put your hand up too as a player. Easy to suck a coach. Oh, just, well, easy, well, yeah. So Brett, Brett Kamala comes in there as the interim coach, which is terrific. Now, Nathan Brown, he has also gone. His is a slightly different story, Crash, because he had already expressed that he and had a meeting with his family. He didn't want to go to New Zealand when the Warriors go back to New Zealand full time. Yeah, I, I got to say, I was a little bit stunned by this. I mean, if you, if you do take the Warriors job and you're not prepared to live in New Zealand, well, I mean, it's a pretty fundamental sort of issue, isn't it? We'd like, Bit of a hurdle. <laughs> well, it'd be like saying, oh, oh Coach the Adelaide Crows, but the thought of living in Adelaide, really? <laughs> you know, like, like that's Crash, a we're in COVID thing. territory. You can yeah. do it over Zoom now. <laughs> yeah. But, but I, I'm fascinated by the next move because I just don't reckon you can go back to these old-style coaches. Mm. And you did. there are exceptions. Bennett connects with the young ones. Bellamy does. But a lot of them don't.